Alaska becomes the 49th state, Richie Valens, Buddy Holly, and the Big Bopper all go to Rock Holla, and it's 1959, the year that Chevrolet made this beautiful beast. Hi, I'm Tammy Walker, and welcome to All Vehicles Great and Small. This 1959 Chevrolet 32 Apache Longbed Stepside is the last of the Task Force Series designs. GMC had designed the Blue Chip Series and sold it to Chevrolet as its stylish Task Force Series. March 1955, they changed mid-season with the second series being released of the 1955 Chevy Pickup. The Chevrolet Advance design from 1947 to 1955 was getting a bit outdated and they wanted something new, so they brought it in mid-season. The 1955 Second Series is also referred to as the Late 55s. Chevrolet used this design up until 1959, but the Apache name carried on for two more years up until 1961. The Task Force series had many new models, including the Sporty Cameo, the 3200 series long box, such as this truck, and the Fleet Side. It was in 1958 that they decided to name the light trucks the Apache series. The medium duty trucks were called the Viking and the heavy duties were the Spartans. 1959 was the last year you could get the factory Napco Power Pack four wheel drive conversion. In 1960, GM decided to start producing their own four x four trucks. The Task Force series was super popular. It brought in 136 different types of trucks marketed in 1958 alone. But by 1960, they decided to end the series and begin the CK series. For the 1959 model year, around 297,000 Apaches were produced. And I couldn't find the exact original price, but it was around $2,700. And today, the prices are anywhere from a few hundred dollars up to $100,000. Besides the Thrift Master i6-235 and the Taskmaster V8-283, a 265 V8 Taskmaster was also available with a 3-speed manual or the 4-speed Hydromatic Automatic. Well, that was just the tip of the iceberg. Please look into this truck yourself. You can find out some more information. I could probably do five or six more videos just on these series alone, but we'll get right to it. The 58 and the 59 both share the fact that they have four headlights. So you have the two headlights here, the two headlights on the other side. Uh, the 59... I'm not sure about the 58, but they have the built-in marker lights, parking lights, into the front grille. We've got the original bumper here, and this looks like where the, the front license plate used to be. The 1959 has a larger emblem, and of course the grille's all different. This hood is similar to the 58, where it has this feature where it comes up, it has the valley and the peaks coming down. This is the original blue of this truck, the original off-white, or maybe they would call that cream. I'm not sure. We have another emblem, the Chevrolet Apache 32. We've got a six lug nut. Now, this is not the original uh, rim. The original rim actually has a hubcap to it. I love these lines, this old steel all right, this truck carried a camper for many years. So there used to be camper mirrors on here, but we have the original style of mirror right here. Looks pretty good. Uh, here's a key lock for this. We'll put the key in, turn that, and you can just open the door. Come back to that later. And here we have our gas, and the gas tank is right behind the seat. We'll talk about that later too. This is a spot for your spare tire to go. And we, once again, we've just got some aftermarket rims. This is the step side long bed. This has the eight foot long bed in here. A lot of times these old chrome tie downs were aftermarkets you can get from the dealer. Uh, this had a camper on it, like I said, for many years, so there was actually a different bumper on this. Right now, there's this bumper, which does not belong with this truck. I'm sure we'll find one one day. 
And we got the tailgate. Pull these up like this. One side is much harder than the other. Bring that down. Go. And then we have the original wood with metal inlaid slats. But as you can see over time, it's starting to rot away. And we do use this truck quite often. Sometimes you gotta give a little push. <clears throat> These are the original tail lights here. And let's come down and take a look. This is considered a heavy half. And what that means is this is a half ton with heavy duty springs. Now we got our exhaust pipe coming out right here on this side. I love this rolled metal here. This is just beautiful. It's original blue. It's really patinaed over the years. Got some different colors and rust on here. Now this door handle doesn't have a key lock. You would lock it inside by just pulling the handle up and it locks. Uh, notice we've got a tiny little heart right here in our little wing windows. And looks like this is where the antenna went. Right, another emblem here. And we've got our windshield wipers. I've got my front axle, got my front suspension leaf springs, some old shocks right here. Some tow hooks. Just put in nice. Let's open up the hood, put my hand under here, and I'll pull this, and I just pull that up, and it goes up so nice and easily, just very nice and easy design. Now this is what is called an I-6, or an inline six engine. This is a 235 I-6, the other option for this was the 283 V8 you could get. Uh, we've got our valve cover. We've got our spark plugs going in. And then our push rods would be in a row all the way down. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, here's our fuel pump and our vacuum pump. And this vacuum pump also helps us operate the windshield wipers. We'll talk about that later. This is a downdraft tube. It's a vent for the block. It goes out down like right there. We've got our distributor cap. We've got our uh, oil dipstick. Got our coil. And back down here is our starter. We've got, of course, our battery right here. And we'll come over here. We've got our radiator down in here is our horn and we've got our fan to our generator we've got our exhaust our intake our carburetor our air filter oil bath our oil filter and you can see the exhaust going down not much in here. I mean, you can just kind of hang out in here if you wanted to, really. Let's go take a look inside. <clears throat> Hello. Come, come. <laughs> Let's see if we can open this back seat up. Okay, this lever is to move the whole seat forward 
and backward like this. Uh, oh, you just, oh, it's been so long. And you just pull it, pull it forward here and you can see the gas tank. And then here we've got our uh, jack. And this is the original seat. I don't even know what the uh, material looks like. I've never actually looked at it and seen it. All right. These are aftermarket seat belts because these trucks didn't really come with seat belts. So here I got the seat belt on, out of my seat. Let's take that off for now. All right. I'm going to turn this on. You turn the key on. Uh, turn the heat off. And down here on the floor, this is our starter. Now everybody starts to clutch differently. I always put my clutch in, make sure it's in neutral. I've got my emergency brake on. Now I don't need to give this truck any gas, I don't think. Some vehicles you give two to four punches of gas to start it. But this one starts up perfectly every time. Let's listen to that horn. Okay. I'm going to turn it off by just flipping the key back off. Put it back into the gear I want it to be. Looks good. So down here, this is for our brights. We would clip that for brights. Our clutch pedal, our brake pedal, our gas pedal, and our starter. The transmission is a four speed. All right, over here, reverse. Bring it back to first, second, third, and fourth gear. There we go. Here's our turn signal indicator. And you can see when I do that, there's a light that lights up here on the dashboard. And let's do the other side. And that's how you should hear the ticking noise. Okay. So we have our lights. Pull the toggle halfway for the marker lights and your headlights and then your brights. Looks like one's out. And you can turn this for the brightness on your display here. This is the choke. The windshield wipers are vacuum operated. Uh, this was actually a downside if you're going up a hill on a rainy day because the pressure would go down and your windshield wipers would barely work. All right, here is what is is our cigarette lighter. This is not the original, but there's a spot for it. We've got our old AM radio. If you've seen our video series, I talk about these a little bit. And then this is the throttle. So this is like cruise control. You're going down the road, and you pull this to what speed you're going, and then you could take your foot off the gas. It holds the gas pedal to where you want it to be. And here is our heat operator. Oh, I want to come back to our old ash can. There. And then this is, opens up the air vents that comes through the fresh air. Here we have the heater defroster unit. So I have the on and off button, but this switches from defroster to heater. All right, our speedometer contains the temperature, the amps, oil, and gas. And a light should light up if you have the brights on. Let's check that out. Yep, there, if you have the lights on, a little red light. Oh, for the radio, this is where the speaker is, here. This is not the original rear view mirror at all, I can just tell you that. <laughs> here at the end is the glove box. Of course, there's not any, oh, yep, there's some gloves right here and some other things. 
right? And you lock that too. Oh, okay, so our air vent for our fresh air on this side, there's a vent over here. And here is this, the driver's side vent. And right above it is the emergency brake. So let me show you how this functions. So that emergency brake is off and then I'll pull it like this. To release it, there's a lever here. I'll pull that lever and put the brake down. I found granny gear, first gear, and this gear is rarely ever used. I would never put it, my vehicle in this gear for daily driving. I always start out in second gear because granny gear is really slow. This is about as fast as you go at the high end of the gear. You can kind of hear the engine whining, transmission whining. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and put it into second gear and slowly go. I don't want to take off. You can see the granny granny knob I'm using here to steer the steering wheel. <laughs> it is turn it, turn, it's turn. Well, get, get a little shrink there. Woo! You can see this truck and many other great cars at the 27th Old Steel Car Show at the Central Washington Agriculture Museum, Sunday, April 28th. 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. There's gonna be a lot of great cars. There'll be some food vendors. Come check it out. And let's do a little reverse. So I'm gonna bring this and I'm gonna pull it towards myself, push it down, and we'll just go. I love the wine reverse makes. Let's talk about the differences between the late 1955 to 1959 Chevrolet Task Force series. The 1955 second series and the 1956 both had the egg crate grill, the single headlights, and the bulbous hood. The 1957 we redesigned to an open grill, still had the single headlights, but a flatter hood. In 1958 began the Apache series to redesign the grill to be shorter, incorporating the parking lights, the hood reshaped with peaks in a valley, and four headlights. And same with the 1959. And if you dig deeper, you can see that every year had the emblem either in a different place or a different size or design. If you have any stories or comments about these truck series, please leave it below in the comment section. We'd love to hear from you. And please like and subscribe our channel. It really helps us out. It helps us grow. And we have a lot of great vehicles we want to show you for the future. And thanks for stopping by. Have a great one.